Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zoom Into Wine. It's time for the show and your host, Ian Blackburn. Well, hello. Thank you for joining me on Zoom Into Wine. My name is Ian Blackburn, and tonight we're going to taste some uh, top values that we have at the Merchant of Wine right now. Every, I don't know, a couple of months, we like to just kind of do something with uh, some value in mind. Um, every every week, we have a different topic on Wednesday nights. I've been teaching wine classes for about 25 years and running the wine store since the pandemic. It's really been able to immerse myself in different wines and, and, and really, uh, you know, the truth is really still there that it's really easy to find uh, a expensive bottle of wine to love but to find something that is affordable and takes a you know doesn't take a toll on the on the checkbook but you really can get some pleasure out of it that's a little more tricky and every time I go to a store and I see a wall full of wine and they're all at this kind of tender price point I look at that wall of wine and I wonder which one of these is better than the next and and so I, I work really hard to find wines that I can you know stand behind and um, I, I do tend to avoid the wines that are at the grocery store for a couple of reasons one is that uh, I, I really can't make money selling wines <laughs> that are at the grocery store some of them uh, they get these deals because they buy them in such large quantity that uh, allow them to make a large markup and still um, be uh, you know a good example is uh, a wine like Dom Perignon. It doesn't sound like it could be a good example, but if I were to buy Dom Perignon from the distributor, I'd pay about two hundred dollars a bottle. Yet Costco can buy it in such a volume that they can sell it for one hundred and sixty nine dollars or something like that with their margin. And uh, that's just uh, that's just the way the retail world works, the, the retail wine, wine world. So I avoid wines like <clears throat> that are at grocery stores because you do need to be able to buy those in volume. And, um, and, and quite honestly, a lot of them are made for the grocery market. They're mass produced. I like to find wines that are a little bit more artisanal. There's certainly enough wineries in the world and uh, I don't need to carry everything. I just need to find a really fun selection and along the way, I fall in love with a couple of them. Uh, in fact, I've, I've bought some wines this week that I'm already planning another one of these uh, for a couple of months from now. I'm finding just some really cool stuff in all the weirdest corners of the world. And that's what I really like too. I like to find stuff that you've maybe never tried before, like wines from Northern Greece that you can't even pronounce. Just really fun stuff. So um, tonight we've got four wines. I'm just gonna show you the event first over here we'll take a look at the website here's our top values in wine page the, if you ordered the flight our flights are now much less expensive because we've taken a little different approach to the business um, we are you know pricing the flights based not on the class themselves just on the retail prices of the wine and hoping to get some more customers involved you know, after the pandemic kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say it's petered out because it hasn't, but it's just kind of moved into a phase where people don't have to live on Zoom. So uh, we, we want to find more people to join us. And so we've created more value here. And uh, I did have to start including uh, charging for shipping, but you can buy the Zooms from like 15 to 25, $35, depending on the topicality. And tonight's Zoom is about 20 bucks. And that, uh, and then it costs money to ship it, whatever that shipping is. And uh, we can even combine it with wine orders. So it can encourage you to order some wine from us and get your Zoom kit uh, with your wine. So um, this, is a, this is a fun way to do it. We've got four fun wines. So we're gonna taste them blind just to see which one you like. And then we'll unveil them at the end. So. Uh, for those of you that have got the vials, you can go ahead and start tasting them. And uh, that, that once you, uh, I'll ask for your answers, we'll use the chat bar down at the bottom of the screen, the little chat button, and have you put, a, put in which one you think is which, okay? Um, just for fun. 
Um, and the most important thing to me isn't getting them right. It's which it, of them do you like? And if you don't like them, tell me that too. Um, but I think these are a, a really fun selection. I also wanted to kind of spread it around a little bit. Um, got a really fantastic wine from Spain. Uh, uh, Bodegas Oliveras. This has been a top seller over the past couple of months. Um, really dependable brand. A great value proposition. We've got uh, just a... I haven't uh, featured a wine like this year over year for a long time. I actually think this wine just keeps getting better. Um, Los Vascos. This is from Chile. Maybe I'm a little bit under the the, the idea that it's a 2018 now and 2018 was one of the best vintages ever in Chile so that's kind of exciting um, then I, I found a new importer small teeny little importer bringing in these little farmer wines uh, from France and uh, this uh, this Chateau Signac is my Rhone wine of the moment. I mean, I, last time I did this event, we had a Rhone wine on there and I still love it. The Plasnol wine is unbelievable. Um, but this is a dollar less and it's also unbelievable. Um, and it really has this tender Grenache thing that I love. Um, and I would say it's like the, if, if Reyes made a $15 version, this would be it. Chateau Reyes is my ultimate wine, by the way. If you want to send me a birthday present, any Chateau Reyes will do. Um, and then uh, a wine from California that uh, we have spoken about recently, but, uh, the brand Donkey and Goat, when we did our Pet Nat seminar. But this is the red from the same house. It's called Gallivanter, and it's really good. And this is a really, uh, you know, big winery in the natural wine movement. So it may stand out a little bit because it's Californian. Um, also, just a little bit of that natural thing going on with it. So um, a little hint there. But a really fun lineup of great values. All these wines are 20 bucks or under. And uh, I, I think you're going to enjoy the, 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 the flight tonight. So go ahead and get started. I'm going to take you through a little uh, slideshow and um, talk about the wines that you've got in your glass answer any questions that you may have and um, and see how things are going Tony Schaefer how are you doing man I haven't seen you in a little bit doing well uh, getting uh, getting reoriented to the wine business now. myself oh, so. no, I can't hear you oh you there Tony, I'm not hearing you. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. There you are. Yeah. So yeah, doing well. Uh, doing some uh, doing some wine business again myself and exporting some California wines. All so, right. Cool. So. Good for you, Lisa. You look very official tonight. Oh, school has begun. Do I need to say anything more? <laughs> Time for more wine. Oh, I couldn't even take off my little logo on the background. I'm just, uh, yes, the so school has begun. All right, cool. Here we go. Well, Ashley, thanks for joining us. Um, looking for a few others. Julie, I see you out there. If uh, when, when you get a chance, you can come on and say hi. But we'll, I'm going to get started on the presentation now as we taste these. Uh, these beauties and well, and you guys just tell me you know as you taste one two three four which ones you like and after the slideshow i'll ask you take a guess at which one's which okay here's how here here we go so one of the four wines don't not in this order um they're completely blind so one of the four wines is the chateau signac and pilocene is how i'm going to pronounce that um, uh, is a, a, like really ancient soil. And so Signac makes a number of different wines. This is one of them. And it's from the 2016 vintage. We're down here in the southern part of the Rhone. 
and uh, down here they can. There's a lot of different Rome grape varieties. Uh, they're focused on the red grape varieties and mostly Grenache down here. Uh, it's a humbler brand, but in a beautiful place. They don't make a ton of wine, but uh, the family owns some really nice vineyards. And the Appalachian used to just sell their fruit to cooperatives. The cooperatives would turn it into bulk Cote de Rhone. And the family took the, the land back and started making their own Cote de Rhone. So it's a, a, a really good move for them. Um, a little more financial investment on their part. A little more risk because they have to sell it but um, a lot more reward and so uh, I was happy to find it we got a little video to take us through Signac and this this place is just so amazing for really old vineyards Sonoma and this is what I get to do every year we take the barrels that we have we blend together the different parcels and even though you might say okay so you got uh, one grape or five grapes and you know how much you, you know why don't you just blend them all together um, when you're blending wine you really want to find the right balance uh, and really express it the way you want it to be expressed doesn't always work out that you use all the fruit that you have from a particular parcel and you might need to find you know another wine to put it in or you sell it off in bulk um, but it's really an amazing process to blend it's one of the great great pleasures of, of making wine and to watch it kind of take its life from that that blending phase um, one of the wines that we're going to taste tonight is uh, oh and let me just finish up by saying about this Signac wine because um, I may not have paid enough attention to this blend but 60 Grenache, 15 Carignan, 10 Morved, 10 Syrah so um, really those are the workhorse grape varieties in the Rhone Valley um, and Grenache is the major star of the show um, and I, I just really cannot believe how much quality balance and and elegance this wine has um, at its price point less than $15 so really uh, a, a staggering value and uh, so uh, that's one of the wines that we're showing tonight now the other is uh, from Spain and this one also has a little Grenache in it but uh, the main star here is Manistral and uh, I'm reading the little quote here. Monastral is our region's classic variety, and with Altos de la Joya, we aim to capture its essence. Each harvest we select from our top lots, utilizing only wild yeast fermentations. Love the label. I think it's really classic. They've been making wine since 1930, and uh, when we look at Spain, 
Uh, we're looking at Mercia down in the lower south, uh, southeast side of France, or I'm sorry, of Spain, right down here, right on the Mediterranean Ocean. And uh, this is a kind of an area of abundance. This is a, kind of known for great value wines down here. And um, this is a lot of a lot of people I know have invested in, in land in this area. Uh, you know, maybe for their retirement. Um, there's a lot of uh, commercial farming, but uh, really underdeveloped and a, a really beautiful part of Spain. Here's the timeline showing you when the ranch got started. And of course, it was a really different world back in the 1960s, 1970s. But by, you know, the late 1990s, you had some wonderful old vines, older vines. And uh, then they they built a beautiful uh, winemaking facility, world class. And they've had a really good run. This wine is imported by one of the best importers. And uh, this is probably the least expensive wine that that importer still brings in. Um, and so it says a lot that they carry a wine that you know, sells for this price point, and it's just a, a truly special little value. Yeah, Tony, you can pour at your own pace and taste these wines. And uh, if you have four glasses, that would even be more exciting potentially to be able to go back and forth between all four of them. But um, uh, I'm going to be doing one glass tonight, uh, and I'll just go through them one at a time and unveil when I'm done with the presentation. So what I love about the way the, the vineyards of Spain are planted is that, first of all, they've got 4,000 years of, of grape growing experience. That's when the Romans planted Spain. And they really are about sustainability. Even, even before that, it was even such a word. Uh, they knew to plant the vines certain space uh, apart from each other because they don't irrigate. These are all dry farms. Um, so by giving this plant enough space, they can fend for themselves. And uh, they are bush vines, they're untrained, untrellised. So if, if, I, if you ever hear that and say, what does that mean? Uh, this is what it means right here, it's a bush. And uh, they've just really connected to the history of, of grape growing and the world has kind of turned around and gone back to this anyway. It's just a, a fantastic way to really maximize quality. One of the wines that we're going to try today is Donkey and Goat. Uh, Galavanter is the wine. They make a lot of different wines at Donkey and Goat. Um, but Galavanter is their least expensive wine. And it's still, you know, up, up and around 20 bucks. I think this is the most expensive wine in the flight tonight. Uh, so maybe another hint. Uh, but Galavanter is super good and in the world of California wine to make a wine that you can sell with a good reputation and sell it for about 20 bucks and it's a red wine um, that's that, that's working pretty hard um, this these guys uh, have been um, kind of focused on uh, Mendocino and Alexander Valley as their where their their appellation is most of their I think production is in the white wine category, as they make a lot of the Pet Nat wine and a lot of whites as well as a few reds. But um, there's a little map to show us kind of where we're at. Um, they are low intervention winery, meaning they really just pick the grapes and let nature do its work. Uh, natural yeast, which is already on the grapevine, no fining, no stabilizing, no filtering. Uh, no plastic fermentation vessels used. That's that's going really far um, and in their ethos and it's a really an authentic thing. They use these old wood tanks that pass on very little influence to the wine and uh, that's that's kind of cool and they've they're really focused on understanding the geology of their places and 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 really make wines that kind of taste like they, they come from significant vineyards 
with a really good results. I think Donkey and Goat has impressed me for a long time. Um, they, uh, I haven't been to the winery to visit yet, but I'm definitely going to make a point of doing so when I'm up in that part of the world again. But they are, in my mind, probably one of the best natural wine producers in the state of California. And they've, been, they've had that ethos for a long time, been natural for a long time since they started. And uh, not a lot of wineries have done that. Some wineries have converted to natural processes. These guys started that way, and I, I, I applaud them for their vision. Oh, we still got to talk about that sapage a little bit. So let me go back one more time. Um, so Merlot based blend with varying proportions of different Rhone Valley red grapes like Grenache, Syrah, Morved. So that's pretty different, right? I want to I want to just pause for a second and look again at the wine. And if you have uh, questions about it, you can always click on one of the wines back on the event. Okay, so this one's $22.95. So uh, with your, if you uh, use the discount code I give you tonight, you're gonna save 10%. So $20.95 will be your price uh, for this wine. Yeah, Merlot-based blend uh, with Rhone Red Grape varieties. So it's not a classic blend. This is just something that they do. They have Grenache, Syrah, Morved, and uh, they're using uh, the Merlot as the, as the supporting vessel and de decorating it with these other grape varieties. So um, it's a way, also maybe if they put the word Merlot on the label, they'd have a harder time selling it. Uh, that's, that's a truth that a lot of Merlot people have run into. And now I think so many people have gotten out of the Merlot business of branding, marketing Merlot. The Merlot is kind of needing someone to step up a little bit. And uh, we've come to realize that we're, we're creating a Merlot event just to celebrate some of the great Merlots. So be looking for that in the future. But um, I really like this wine. I hope you do too. We'll move back into our PowerPoint and go to our next brand. Las Vascos. Now, I've, I've been following these guys for a while. This is a really important, very large vineyard. Uh, boy, uh, 300,000 cases. When I said uh, smaller producers, I guess this one breaks the rule because uh, this is owned by Le, uh, Domain Baron uh, Rothschild, Lafitte Rothschild. But I, I, I guess I hold a double standard uh, for the for the for these guys because they do actually sell their wine in a lot of venues and uh and i think it's one of the wines that can get away with it because um they do it well and their goal here isn't to necessarily gouge anybody this wine's always been fighting at the sub 15 dollar price point and they they get this thing all over the world and i think it's just really well done and it's just really hard to fault them um, I do taste other Chilean wines and I don't often like them as much as this one either so I wouldn't buy this wine if I didn't like it a lot um, and think that you know I could find something else better for the money so I guess this wine does kind of slap me in the face a little bit and say you know you've got you said something earlier about not buying grocery wines but you know we also buy some champagne that's uh, you know big things that are all over the place there are some wines that are just kind of you need in in the in the grand scheme of things um and i need a really good cabernet this is the least expensive cabernet on my website um and it kind of this is the wine that i'm like hey are you better than los Vascos? are can you even at your even though you're five dollars more are you better than los Vascos? that's kind of what i use it for so this is my house cab and in uh, Chile they have just an abundance of great growing conditions uh, Chile and California the coastlines are com are always com being compared the way the weather patterns are of course they're six months ahead of us down there but um, uh, it's it's just a really amazing place to grow grapes and I think 
you know, Chile has emerged. It, 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 back in the 80s and 90s, it was a place where you went for really cheap, but not very good wines. And I'm sure there's still a lot of those out there, but they have really come a long way. And uh, we've, we see a bunch of different quality levels coming out of Chile. Um, and most of them are in the higher tier, higher aspirational bracket now. So um, this, this place is really improving. And uh, the vineyard spots are just gorgeous. And they don't have a lot of um, pressure from incoming real estate projects. They have just amazing natural resources. And uh, a lot of chili is really being grown in the most natural process as well. Um, not necessarily saying that this is biodynamic or organic uh, at all, but they definitely are being very careful with their uh, programs such as recycling, water uh, reuse, uh, waste mitigation. Uh, I mean, even the package on the Los Vascos is, is uh, fairly earth uh, friendly, being a lightweight glass container. And uh, so a lot of things like that they put their mind to. Some of them have financial connections as well. You know, lighter container, cost less to ship, all that. But uh, just really um, a good pro product at a good price point. And they don't necessarily make 10 other wines either. They're there to make Cabernet. Um, and that's that's was a really important vineyard investment. It's one of the larger vineyards in the world. Um, 300,000 cases from one vineyard. That's a bunch of wine. And so it's a really impressive project. All right, so we've got um, we've got our Cotaron Signac. We've got the Monastrol from Spain. We got the California wine called Galavanter, which is a Merlot-based wine. And we've got the Cabernet from Chile. The first question I'm gonna ask if you could chat it up is, uh, which one do you like the best after tasting all four? Were you able to get all four tasted? I'm going to start with wine number one now. Not telling you what it is, but uh, if you could send me a chat and let me know which one you like the best. Tony, Lisa, I saw Bravo on there. Are good you, evening. Hi there, Jeff. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Just I'm eating, so I didn't want to be on camera. But I'll, I'll be on in a sec. No, no problem. <laughs> Is your wife joining you tonight? Well, she's in uh, she's in Oregon yet again. So um, anyway, so next week though, South Africa, she'll be here. All right, cool. So um, I'm I'm tasting wine number one. But if you guys have a, a response as to which one you like the best, I'll. Uh, I'm getting a couple of answers now, but I'll uh, start to reveal these in a second. So wine number one, I'll hold that up and you can see, um, has a really nice, uh, Kind of darker fruit color, but it doesn't have the greatest of concentration. It has a very spicy nose. Dark fruited. There's a, a little bit of a, a leafy element to it. Like, um, I don't know if you have tomato plants or have ever picked tomatoes before, but the smell of a tomato plant, the tomato leaf, there's a lot of um, very nice, soft and tender type of earthy notes here. Um, I am gonna put this one in the old world and 
uh, will estimate that this one is probably one of the Rhone varietal wines. In fact, um, now that I've got some answers, Tony said he liked number three best. Uh, number four was most unique. There's a reason for that one. Julie, your favorite is number two. Cool. So number one is, I was going to pretend to take the bag off, but I got it right here. I already pulled the wine out. I just want to show it to you. Number one is the Chateau Signac. This is the Cote de Rhone. Put it up like that. And um, I'm just going to show you. Let me break out of that. $13.95. I, because it's a small um, uh, producer importer, I scored it. Um, color 14, aromas 23, body 23, overall 32 out of 35. And so that's a 92 point score. Um, I do think that uh, this wine really brings brings in just amazing quality balance. That tomato leaf element is something I'm quite partial to. Um, that's a very Grenache note. That's something that you'll find in a lot of Southern Rhone wines. Either the smell of tomato or maybe V8 if you close your eyes and smell. I was a bartender for a long time and I made Bloody Marys with V8 juice. And so I can, yeah, that, that smell is so impermeated in my memory. And so when I smell Grenache, I get that little hint there. And I just think it's really nicely done and um, really a charming little wine. Uh, I hope you guys agree. Didn't win any favorites, but that's okay. Uh, we have some really awesome stuff on the lineup tonight. So let's take a look at wine number two. Which one could it be? We know that Signac has now been exposed. And so we'll go to wine number two. Wine number two, for those of you tasting at home, a little darker, a little deeper color. Mm. And there's also a bigger fruit expression here, a little riper in the nose. Um, also, alcohols appear to be a little, little warmer. I'm gonna confirm that, let me just see. Wine number one had alcohol, probably 13.5. Um, this one's saying 14.5. This, is, on, on the nose, I'm just going to describe it. How dark that is. And this is really dense, deep, kind of perfumed fruit here that's a little riper a little more hedonistic it, it kind of is a fistful of wine and really gives you a, a bigger expression here volume knobs turned up a little bit a little more assertive on wood use as well so everything's just a little bit more, 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 more concentration, more power, a little more alcohol, a little more ripeness. 
Um, it still has that Roan-like character. Um, in uh, Spain, they call it, I wanna make sure here, I'm going to give you the right information. Let me just double check. The wine is a blend of 90% Monistrol. This is from Spain. And uh, yes, Monistrol is known as Morved. Mor Morvedra. So this is a very Rhone blend, but it's Morvedra or Monistrol from Spain with Grenache. And uh, I, I just totally dig this wine. I think it's very... Uh, impressive at its price point uh, we'll take a look at it here I'll share the screen you can take a look twelve dollars and forty nine cents uh, this got uh, 90 points by Robert Parker ungrafted old vines creamy and balsamic touch with sweet spices intermixed with ripe berry fruit notes of pencil lead and licorice with the fruit being ra uh, black rather than red the palate is juicy and round with very fine tannins and some creamy oak on the finish totally agree there 200,000 bottles so that's not a big production at all um, but uh, enough to get it imported here um, probably around what is that 15,000, 18,000 cases somewhere in there. And uh, just screaming value, screaming value. Um, so a little more punctuated, perfumed, popping. Um, wine number one, a little more restraint, a little more elegance, a little softer, a little more earth oriented too. Um, so now we'll move into wine number three and see what you think. I think Tony said this was your favorite, wine number three. Still feel that way, Tony? Yeah. I thought I thought wine four was had the most unique uh, aroma, but I like the, I like wine three. Cool. Can can you tell me what you liked about it? Um It uh, was spicy, and okay. I'm not. Sure. Um, I think it. I mean, I'm thinking it's the cab, but um, and it, it is. Uh, it's our Merlot blend. Ah, Merlot blend. Yeah, and and this has got a lot of, you know. Uh, yeah. A lot of fruit orientation i love the personality behind it and they put uh almost no sulfur to protect this wine tony this wine when you open it it actually has a little bit of effervescence because this wine is barely i mean it's still alive it has not been shut down by protective uh sulfur and so you can get a little bit of spritz in the mouth. And by the time I, I poured these into your cups and portioned them out and it's been open for a day, that's all mellowed out now. But it's still kind of wild on the nose. It's got that really fun kind of wild thing that will happen with natural wines. It's kind of earth and it smells like it's just finished fermenting. maybe on the gamey side of the fence a little bit because it hasn't been protected. So some of that overt fruitiness has turned into kind of a, a really fun uh, development in, in the nose. Maybe even kind of going towards uh, slight hints of balsamic, um, some candied fruit.
Now they throw a bunch of different Rhone varieties in here, Grenache, Syrah, Morved as well. But that Merlot base, and I do think that the, that's pretty significant, like 70, 80% Merlot. It was just wonderful to play around with there. And uh, it's, it's a lot of wine. It's a little bit more expensive. So, and it, I think it kind of tastes like that too. It's got kind of that bigger gutsy kind of character to it. But alcohols aren't super high. This has been, uh, let me see what the alcohol says on the label. It is difficult to find. And I do not see it. I'm going to give up. But I'm going to estimate that this wine's somewhere around 14. I wouldn't call it overripe. I talk about how far away you are from the glass when you feel the heat of the alcohol coming off as being kind of a way to measure the alcohol. And it's, you know, somewhere 14.25 to 14.5. It's not uh, overly ripe. It's got a really fun state and quite gulpable. You could really get into uh, drinking this pretty easily. It doesn't even need food. This is just a really fun sit around, have a glass of red wine type of wine. And it, on opening, I think it's even a little bit more spirited with that kind of still evolving state that it's in. Um, and some people really like that. Some people are going to be like, whoa, what's going on here? But that is what natural wine will do. And so this is uh, just something fun to know about. And I think at its price point, home run. I love it. I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. All right, our last wine you can use by deduction and note that uh, our last wine is the Chilean Cabernet. Um, and I'll just show that to you now as well. Los Vascos, $11.95. And I have to work pretty hard keep it $11.95, I will be honest, because I don't get to buy a huge amount of it. But I do want to remain competitive. It's really hard to find a Cabernet that I can put forward at this price point that smells and tastes like Cabernet. This wine got 91 points by James Suckling. It says, rich, spicy aromas with a core of red plums as well as a gentle minty edge the palate is round succulent fruit flavors with a special fresh and juicy finish like the acidity here drink or hold and this is a fun wine to lay down actually as in its first couple of years it's very primary and it really starts to come together in about year four so by 2022 this wine just will all of a sudden become much more Bordeaux-like. But let's smell this together. The first thing you're always going to get with a Chilean uh, wine is that very distinctive Chilean earth. Um, it can throw you a little bit. It, it's, it can smell a little leafy, a little tar-like, like road tar, black I've heard descriptions like uh, uh, fresh cut uh, garden hose. Have you ever heard of that? Did you see the Psalm series? Maybe uh, um, maybe a little, uh, if you're into muscle cars, like you just smoked your tires. But then you get to that, those classic Cabernet nuances little mint, eucalyptus, um, cola, uh, cassis, cherry, you know, I, kind of the expensive spa aromas, the, uh, the herbs and spices, coffee. 
I'm getting a lot of roasted coffee today. Maybe because it's been open for uh, a day or a day and a half. There's Julie. Julie, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm thinking is I really enjoyed the tasting. I thought it was great. Two of them I felt really confident on. One of them was, or the other two, I'm like, I don't know. Um, but I'm really mad that I like this Chilean one because I don't like Chilean wine. <laughs> and I, I do like, I knew this one was the Chilean one, but I was surprised at how much I liked it. I did not expect it. I thought, oh, when I get to that Chilean one, I'm going to want to spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pleasantly I'm glad you said pleased. that because I think a lot of people feel that way you know certain countries kind of hit you a certain way you know if I say German Riesling people oh I don't like sweet and that's not necessarily the way they want to be known um, Chilean wines don't necessarily want to have that that kind of mark against them either but there is an earthy element to that, that, that the Chileans have totally gotten used to. Um, you know, if you drink Bordeaux, you're gonna have that same kind of earthy thing, but it's a little, a little different earth and a little different place on earth. So every every country place kind of has a mark. What I think Los Vascos achieves is a way of presenting that mark uh, of being from Chile, being from Colchagua, in a way that's complementary to the wine and doesn't stick out like a nail that you have to deal with so much and it's it's, it's really in, in nice proportion um and uh, the fruit intensity here is also helping because they do a great job of really promoting the fruitiness here it is a cabernet and it's tannin it's got tannin and structure and they put it in some really nice wood and um and all that comes together to make a pretty nice wine for the for the buck. That's what, pretty. What hard. is the altitude? Um, they're not high altitude. Let me see if a note says. I'm gonna guess though. Just being honest, I don't think. Yeah, it's 130 meters above sea level, and 40 kilometers from the ocean, or kilometers. So what's that? 140 miles, 130 miles. Is that right? No, I think it's more like like 35 miles or 30 miles, because like 88 kilometers per hour is 55. Yeah, I always think about Thank that. You. <laughs> when I said that, I had to. I remember doing a. I think it's 1.6. 1. 1.6 the, the... is the number. Right, 60 percent. Okay. So it's about 30 miles. So, yeah. Somewhere in there. My wife's from Brazil. I have to know the metric system. Yeah, that's good. I haven't I haven't done the kilometer thing in a while. I, I ran a, th I don't know, some sort of a uh, 50K race one time when I was young. And uh, I was happy to find out it wasn't 50 miles. <laughs> or that. So I said 40 kilometers. So, uh, yeah, so 30, 30 Let's call it 28 miles, something like that. Looking at the winemaking note, there's quite a bit of detail there. So if you like the wine, you want to dig in a little bit more. Uh, Los Foscos has a pretty robust website as well. But uh, I, I, I probably show the Los Vasco wine every year just because I find a way to bring it around. Um, I take a big chunk of it on their new release and eventually just kind of slowly whittle through it a bottle or two or ten at a time. Um, it's a really good house wine. Twelve bucks. It's hard not to like that. Yeah. And uh, I, I really love the Gallivanter. Um, a little more, you know, that riper fruit, but it's a quite a different price point going from twelve to twenty two. Um, that's a pretty big shift so might not be fighting in the same weight class here but uh in the world of of uh natural wines and uh this just wine stands out as just super super good quality and really fun 
And in fact, of, of all the wines that we're tasting tonight, it's the wine I would probably want to open up if I wasn't going to have any food and I just wanted to have a fun, hedonistic wine experience. That would be it. Uh, some of these wines are way better with cuisine. Yeah. And, uh, you know, good thing about a leftover bottle of wine, you can always cook with it. I love to reduce uh do some uh stewed meats and things like that in the slow cooker um that's really fun with uh inexpensive wines that have been open for a couple of days save them up and use them in a in a crock pot or some sort of a uh, a slow cooking method and let them reduce and turn into something delicious once again oh, yeah. We have a couple of fun uh, things coming down the pipe. So I just want to share. Um, you can always find them at Zoom Into Wine. But now you can also find all of our activities on the new Wine Cloud website. Or if you went to learn about wine, you'd come here. If you went to Wine LA, you'd come here. And if you want to find out about any of our STARS events, we're promoting ourselves now as the face of wine education and the face is that face that you make when you got your nose in the glass and you're like mm -hmm. that's the face and so we're having fun with that idea and we're uh we're gonna ask some folks to send us some photos but these are some of my professional friends that are getting their face taken um but here's the master calendar for everything that we're doing now and we even put some fun content on there. Like if you ever wonder where people find out about these national wine holidays. Uh, today was actually uh, inter uh, National Pinot Noir Day. So we had that on our calendar. It probably fell off by now. Um, this weekend I'll be up in Sonoma pouring my wine at a great event called Project Zin with uh, Clay Moritzen and, and just just about everybody that's great in the Zinfandel world that of this event sells out in hours and I'm always lucky to be given a ticket to pour my wine so I'll be in really good company um, next week is our stars of South Africa event and the wines are special and this is another place where I sometimes have to convince people um, you know oh, I don't typically like South African wines well let me prove you I got six ways to prove you wrong next week. These are awesome. In fact, the Baton Sauvignon Blanc over the past year and a half is our best selling wine by far on the website at Merchant of Wine. It is just such a sensational bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. Um, this Rats Shannon is in our top 10 um, of, of, the, of two years. It's not about this event, it's just the, the fact. And this is probably one of the biggest underachievers because nobody knows what the hell Glen Ellie is unless you're really into South African wine. When you try it, you're going to be like, wow, that is just amazing Chardonnay. And it, this ages like Burgundy. Um, I currently have both the 2014 and 19 on the website. That's how much I love it. Um, this is a new find uh, and a, another great Rhone blend that you can get for under 15 bucks. And if uh, I wasn't using it in the Stars of South Africa, I'd probably be using it tonight. It's just a great little Syrah Senso blend from uh, South Africa. The wine that people probably have a hard time understanding, Pinotage, made by the best producer. And this is sensational stuff, Canon Coupe. Since the 1600s, these guys have been making Pinotage. So really one of the great classics and uh, the benchmark. And then a, an incredible wine from Detorin called Fusion 5. And this wine's about 60 bucks and gets huge scores from, I don't care who reviews it, um, just really an awesome uh, Bordeaux style blend. So there's a bunch of ways to prove to you that, uh, that South Africa is worth trying and all the winemakers are gonna be on the Zoom and uh, tomorrow's our last day to pick up this early bird pricing. Um, and then we move to this last price bracket. So if you wanna join us, jump in, because the flight, the six bottles is worth 250 bucks and you can get it tonight for 175 or you can do the flight kit for 40 bucks.
But all of our upcoming events are here and we're now working out into October. So probably by end of this week, you'll see every event in October. But uh, we have a few classes and a few other activities outside of our Zoom into Wine activities. We, we were kind of trying to get excited about opening up some live events. We had a very successful first one with our champagne tasting, but it was just at that moment where LA was starting to flip back the other way with the virus. And uh, we just could not uh, go out and, and pr promote those any further. So we postponed a lot of activities, painful, expensive to do, but we had to do that. So we're just on Zoom again for a little while. And as soon as it's safe to go back outside and play, we will. And when I say outside, we are taking on some outside events. We're the wine force behind the Pacific Wine and Food Classic down in Orange County. This is a, an awesome gathering uh, in, in Newport Beach, literally on the beach. Click in here, you'll learn about that. And one of our favorite events of the year, LA Magazine's food event out in the hills of Malibu. Both those are outside and uh, we'll have significant audiences and they're gonna be uh, well attended with great restaurants and just really interesting uh, events and something I miss dearly. So with that, that's a look at our website and what's going on in the future. We have some really fun Zoom activities each Wednesday, next week being Stars of South Africa. So join me again and have a good night, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. Be safe and be well and check out uh, Merchant of Wine. Purchase any of these wines if you wanna grab them. You got an extra 10% if you join the Zoom tonight. You got that special code in the email okay. and uh, use it and abuse it. Take care guys, thanks awesome. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. See ya. Bye-bye.